Hi, everybody. It is March 12, 2019. Unusually strong storm to grow into raging blizzard across the U.S. Plains. Okay. Um, this is what they are predicting for tomorrow into Thursday. Move. A storm is forecasted to move out of the southwest and rapidly intensify over the plains of Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas on Wednesday, bringing a wide array of life-threatening weather hazards for a large part of the country. Don't you love it? Another thousand plus mile storm will suddenly develop. And I'm going to show you some sites where you cannot see how this thing could possibly blossom into what they are describing right here. Why it matters? The storm is likely to intensify at a rate that will qualify it as a meteorolo meteorological bomb. A meteorological bomb, short for bombogenesis, which describes non-tropical storms whose central pressure drops by at least 24 millibars in 24 hours. In fact, this storm is likely to rival some of the most intense weather systems on record in parts of the plains. The lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. While it isn't tropical in origin, this storm could have a minimum central air pressure that's typically found in Category 2 hurricanes. The storm is likely to bring nearly every weather hazard possible at once. Wow! In a swath of land from South Texas to Eastern Nebraska, a severe thunderstorm outbreak is predicted to take place on Wednesday, which includes the potential for tornadoes. The region at risk for severe thunderstorms will push, push eastward on Thursday as warm, humid air is drawn northward from the Gulf of Mexico. So, in the plains of eastern Colorado and parts of Nebraska and Kansas, rain, freezing rain, sleet, heavy snow are forecasted as the storm intensifies. Some areas may pick up more than a foot of snow as wind gusts to 70 miles per hour lead to blizzard conditions. Listen to this. The closures of the entire interstate, including I-70, all interstates in Colorado, including I-70, may be closed. Wow, that's quite a storm. Blizzard warnings have been posted from Colorado, including Denver and Colorado Springs, into southeastern Wyoming, as well as Nebraska and southwest South Dakota. The storm spins northeastward, it's predicted to bring heavy rain on top of a deep snowpack in the upper Midwest with the potential for severe flooding in some areas. It will generate a huge and powerful wind field as air rushes toward the storm center. High wind watches cover a vast region from South Texas to Iowa and wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour are possible in the hardest hit regions. The storm system is going to affect the entirety of the central states from the U.S.-Mexico border to the U.S.-Canadian border. It's unusual to see a low pressure area intensify so rapidly over land since this is more common over the oceans. And Mississippi to Michigan on alert for severe storms with damaging winds. Uh, risk of severe thunderstorms will shift eastward across the Ohio and lower Mississippi valleys on Thursday. Uh, severe weather over the south central United States 
into Wednesday, following severe weather, into Wednesday, from all, all week it's going to go on? Okay, so it's Tuesday. This is going to be occurring Thursday. So following severe weather into Wednesday. Great. The entire swath from Michigan, Indiana, Ohio to Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana can expect showers and thunderstorms uh, with uh, potential damaging winds, wind gusts. And it is possible the severe weather risk extends further to the north and northwest into Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee. All right. Well, very unusual weather, don't you think? It is very unusual weather. Um, this is what it looks like on radar. We've got radar blasting the entire southeast into Texas, on up Kentucky, Ohio. So you have a little bit of precipitation here with these extremely low frequencies um, and some precipitation, Wisconsin. It's clear tonight in South Carolina, but we've got radar pulsing quite strongly, powerfully. It's intense. So I guess this is what's going to be intensifying. This uh, this line of precipitation. They're going to blow this up. Now, we have seen over the years mainstream media hyping, I mean, never like they have before. In the past few years, they have so uh, dramatically hyped storms, and I remember last year they were claiming that this hurricane was going to be a hurricane that was off the coast of Mexico and it was going to be going through Mexico and then right on up into Arizona and it was going to go on up to Utah and then it was going to create severe chaos for the country and nothing happened. Nothing happened. So I guess this is it, right? We have an extremely low frequency which is coming from, um, sorry I don't know the area of Texas, but this is an extremely low frequency that I don't recall ever seeing coming out of this area extending all the way down to the coast and this is being used to modify manipulate the storm but another extremely low frequency and as you can see these these red bulbs that erupt, that's the high frequency heating or it could be high frequency heating from radar but it could also be microwaves that are heating up areas. So why don't we take a look at another site to see if we have any, you know, those Harp rings, the harp next rad signatures. Uh, let's go here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And 
let's just scroll on through. So look at what are perfectly defined circular patterns intersecting right here. This is New Mexico, this is Texas, Oklahoma, and they are claiming that this is going to blow up. Well, they are heating this thing up. Harp, Nixrad, radar, high frequency heating, signatures. Right there. With microwaves. And I'll link below, so if you can't see it in my video, click on the link and get it on your computer. There's also Harp Nextrad right down here. And that is why you see this trail of red. It's being heated. You can see the Harp Nextrad signature throughout this entire bizarre looking, uh, just a trail of precipitation. And of course the extremely low frequencies that you can see here. God, I'm so sick of this. So just be prepared for, you know, really bad storms. But as you can see, that's a huge harp nexrad signature, the circle, with intersecting high frequency heating. So, yeah, they're going to blow this up. Whether or not, you know, it actually manifests to be a storm that's going to bring every possible weather hazard to the plains. That remains to be seen. But they do have a lot of frequencies going on. Interesting that they... Now I don't know how they use these frequencies to manipulate, modify, even create weather. But we generally see extremely low frequencies emitted from Galveston, Houston area, on up to Fort Worth, Dallas. Well, very, a very faint frequency coming tonight. So, it's like they turn off these frequencies because of what they want to accomplish. Um, let's just check out a little bit further above. About here. You can see the pulsating Doppler radar these gray circles that turn blue with the dot in the middle. That's the center of the radar. Oh boy, I hope all of you are safe and nothing happens. I really do. Uh, All right, I do want to show you this. Okay, so this is satellite, and this is radar. Okay, so this is all that we see, except for uh, little beads of precipitation that we don't even know if it's precipitation. It could just be caused by uh, radar. So, 
That's essentially it. This is the precipitation. The blue is the radar, the scattering. Uh, that's not precipitation. And I'm, I would say that my guess, there's no precipitation here where you see the green. Or maybe just a faint, faint little, uh, you know, spits of rain right here. But what do they have planned? This is satellite. Now this is going into the 13th. Look at how massive this becomes. And it's all being fed, as I have shown before. It's fed from the Pacific uh, through Mexico. Generally, I see it fed right into the Gulf. This is being fed right into Texas. But this apparently has not happened yet. Because all we see on the radar, and this is uh, this is goes into the thirteenth. And that's uh, UTC. So it's not Eastern Standard Time. It's 11.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, they are going to. Intensify this greatly. Um, oh boy. You can see the microwaves down here. I don't know why this is doing this, this site right now. It never has done that before when it goes to white. But you can see all of the microwaves right down here. And no, I can't enlarge this for you. But let's just take another look at it. Um, by the way, you guys in the UK, well, you're getting your 1,000-plus mile storm as well. This whole thing is manufactured. This is how huge they plan on making this. We'll see if it comes about. Um, here is College of DuPage. And that's also going white. Um, but this is a closer image. You can see all of the frequencies. They're not hiding a thing anymore. They are not hiding any of this. None of this is natural. Look how they are funneling the aerosols. And with the use of the microwaves and the high frequency heating, boom, you got a bombogenesis. Look how straight lined this is. I know, I say the same thing over and over and again, uh, over and over again. You guys know it. You can see all of the microwaves through this. So it's not just radar that they're using the high frequency um, pulses. They're also using microwaves, all of the ripples to heat this thing up, to intensify it, and to bring you guys winds, which that's what I'm concerned about. I don't want to see any more tornadoes. I don't want to see any more damage. All right, well, yeah, it's hard to take seeing this over and over and over again. And you would think that people would be asking questions because it's bizarre that we're getting these massive storms Back to back to back. I mean, they just, oh, it's like nonstop. Look at all of the microwaves in this. I mean, this is, and look at all of the aerosols being laid out.
I mean, you see the grid pattern right at the tail end. Come on. Right down here. This whole thing is manufactured. So all of you in the areas that I mentioned, you know, just prepare. Prepare yourselves for anything. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> that's, that's all we can do now. And I look at these things and I'm, I'm seeing, you know, the jet streams, high pressure, low pressure. I mean, it's like chaotic. It's, uh, let's just say the instabilities that allow them to create these storms, they're ramping them up big time. All right, so let's check it out. Let's see if this actually occurs tomorrow because we don't see this right now on the radar sites. So this is what they have planned for you. Um, it doesn't exist. However, you do see high frequency heating here in uh, Kansas. So be prepared for anything Look at all of these Doppler radar stations, very active from Ohio all the way down to uh, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and then along the coast. So what are you getting? England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Storm? Gareth, 1,000 mile wide weather bomb to bring 80 miles per hour winds. Okay, well, so you're getting a bombogenesis. We're getting a bombogenesis. And dangerous storm Gareth is set to bring potentially destructive and life-threatening weather conditions that threaten widespread travel chaos and power cuts to most of the UK. The thousand mile wide weather bomb. You got a weather bomb too. Just at the same time, we're getting a weather bomb. So I guess these weather bombs are not rare anymore. They're commonplace. They're happening all over simultaneously. Jesus. Yeah. It will trigger severe weather. Uh, yellow warning for strong winds covers Northern Ireland, Wales, most of England, and western parts of Scotland. While a rain warning has been issued for the northwest of England, where more than two inches could fall. Did you know that you could develop anxiety from, from severe storms? It's severe storm anxiety. So click on the link below and find out what you should do if you suffer from severe storm anxiety. I can't even. I grew up with storm anxiety severely. I was never in a storm that traumatized me. I was never in a tornado, but my mom was terrified of storms for whatever reason and looking at research. I absorbed some of that. Wow. Well, get on medication. I have not read this article. I don't intend to. 1,600 dairy cows died in blizzard west of Tri-Cities. Okay. Dairy farmers who had been in the business, this is in Washington State, who had been in the business their entire lives said they had never seen anything like the weather that hit areas near Grandview and Sunnyside between the Tri-Cities and Yakima. Uh, and Yakima. Uh, people were expecting some snow, but not one was expecting it as bad as it was. 30 inches of snow, not bad. Uh, 44 mile per hour winds, not horrible. Temperatures that fell 
to 18 below. Not good. Uh, it was just unbelievable. It's nothing you would have thought. So the farmers provided extra bedding for cows and extra feed because cows need to eat more in cold weather. They were working to prevent freezing water in troughs and making regular, regular checks, breaking ice when needed. To help with the wind, they were creating windbreaks in addition to the ones already on the farms by stacking bales of straw. It still wasn't enough. Washington State ranks 10th in the nation for milk production. Expect milk to go up. Expect meat to go up. Uh, we've had an awful lot of cow deaths. Weather conditions to the north were just insurmountable. There were just some terrible things about the storm. Calling it a 100-year event. So we've got a lot of 100-year events, and yeah. That is the saddest thing I've seen. All the cows are dead. Look how they're dragging them away. Okay, so I'm asking all of you in Washington, was it so bad? Was it so bad in these areas that you're not surprised that 1,600 dairy cows died? Because, frankly, I, in reading this article, it I can't quite reconcile. You know, you might have had some weak cows, you might have had some ill cows that would have died in these conditions. Did the condition go on? The only thing that I can see that was really bad was the 18 below zero. Um, but they were making sure that their water, their feed, um, you know, they prepped as much as they could to keep these cows alive and 1600 died. So what is going on? You, uh, I, I can't, this does not make sense to me. But maybe it was so horrible there that, you know, cows are strong. So, please, you guys in Washington, leave us comments. Let us know what's going on because, frankly, it sounds like something else. Got those cows and we know that they do use an awful lot of these frequencies um, to bring about these weather conditions. Um, many people have have said that it feels far colder now, like it almost hurts, like you're walking out into ice. And there are times, I'm in South Carolina, and I'll walk out. I'm from the north, okay? I'm used to cold temperature. But I will walk out, and if, if it's like 35 or 40 degrees, it feels so much colder. Um, and it does. It feels like ice is on my skin. Um, I don't know. I, I just can't imagine 1,600 dying from you know this blizzard unless it lasted, you know, for a really long time. I uh, was left a comment, I think yesterday, below one of my videos, and they were saying the cow deaths, you know, they're destroying the ranchers, they're destroying the uh, cattle for beef, destroying dairy cows and they're going look considering the weather we're going to see an awful lot of food shortages and the prices of food skyrocketing it may happen incrementally it, it in, incrementally and it may happen um, fast sharply I don't know but it's coming so anyway please guys um, 
the forecast, you know, today, <laughs> weather channel on at a neighbor's. And it says sunny for Anderson, South Carolina. There was no sun. It, it was completely covered in cloud. We don't know. I want to know, though, because I do have a lot of subscribers in this area. I want to know what is happening. And I, I, I want to know that you guys are safe. So please leave comments for us. I really would appreciate it. Thanks.